Lisa, I can, I'd see her turning into the So we, we play music from the Balkans. We play music from the Balkans, and um, we're going to play this. It's a slow, it's an unmetered piece of music. Um, this is something that George fell in love with many, many years ago. This is the sun in our law, by the way. <laughs> um, and it's just to be evocative. It's a, meant to be like a table song, a listening song, a sitting around, let your mind go where it will kind of piece of music.
Nicholas Lee. Thank you. <laughs> My grandma always used to say that we were her favorite grandchildren. <laughs> because we were the only grandchildren. <laughs> um, I remember narr narrating my young mind out loud in the kitchen on, in the house on Serrano Circle. My gum gum, a name I gave her as a result of mispronunciation of the word grandma, would annotate my every thought, movement, and utterance, even when I said, I don't know what to think about. I remember walking over a bridge with her and flinging my little doll over the side into the creek. She kindly asked a man walking by to help rescue the doll which he did. I learned from that never to be afraid to ask for help, and that being friendly really pays off, a lesson that has greatly helped me to get to where I am today. My grandma had one of the biggest hearts known to mankind, known to human existence. Um, her reliably consistent smile and delightful attitude brought so much beauty into this world. Now, her essence is still within each of us. We bring her love into the world when we warmly greet another being, when we listen with joy and curiosity to another, another's life stories, when we lend our compassionate attention and aid to those in need, and when we let the beauty of life flow through our fingertips onto a canvas, or into our ears from an orchestra, or into our hearts, or from our hearts into the hearts of others that we love. Lynette's love carries on. I will remember her as I travel and explore new wonders of the world with open eyes, mind, and heart, and curiosity, through times both good and less good. Nanette was one of the greatest women I ever knew, and I will always keep her in my heart. I remember one time painting with her um, out in a garden with a bunch of the people that she painted with every Tuesday, and she taught me to always keep the horizon line. To, to never paint the horizon line in the middle. And so whenever I painted sunrises and sunsets, I would always make sure to not paint them in the middle. And the last time I got to, to see her, I got to paint a picture of her and also got to um, paint a waterfall and made sure, well, the waterfall actually had no horizon line. So that's all the problem. <laughs> so, though she remained famous only amongst those who knew her, she remains one of the most important beings in my life, and her spirit of joy and beauty will continue to inspire me and you to raise our heads and smile in the face of life's continuous games of sunrises and sunsets. Thank you.
man, that reminded her, him of Santa Claus. And that's very appropriate since December 25th is my birthday. <laughs> uh, just the segue between speakers. <clears throat> I'm Peter Liefman. I'm the eldest, but I do not act my age, okay? <laughs> Our family moved across the country following job opportunities. My dad, Hans Peter Liebman, worked at the University of Michigan in the Aeronautical Engineering Department, and several of his colleagues moved to Southern California to private industry as the space race kicked off in the late 50s and early 60s. One of these colleagues was Jay Schetzer and his wife Betty and their family. When we moved to Redondo Beach in 1958 and 59, our family already had other families and friends from Michigan here to help the transition here in Southern California. Subsequently, Dad took jobs in Northern California and Arlington, Virginia, though most of these moves happened after the four of us had moved out of our home for college and or work, etc. I'll speak a little slower, I'm not used to speaking. So when Dad and Mom decided it was time to retire, they contacted friends and former work colleagues for ideas of places to move. The Schetzers recommended San Luis Obispo for many reasons. There is an active arts community and a music community here, such as the Mozart Festival and, dare I say, the San Luis Obispo Symphony. San Luis Obispo has a great climate and it is midway between Los Angeles and the San Francisco Bay Area. At the time when they moved here, Bob and our sister Joan both lived in Los Angeles, and Lisa and I lived in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. They were mid-state, so we could all visit each other. Pause. I was living in Portland, Oregon, and our father, Hans Peter, was in the hospital in San Jose Obispo. So I was visiting here when Mom invited me to a birthday party for Betty Schetzer at Linnaeus. I was late showing up. And I noticed Mom, Nanette, sitting at a table on the right side of the room. There were speakers and musicians honoring Betty on her birthday on the stage. I came up behind Mom, who was tapping on a man's shoulder sitting in front of her. She was trying to tell him to stop eating his dinner while the event was going on, since it is rude for an audience member to disrupt a performer on stage or a speaker. When I said hello from behind her, she went, <laughs> she realized she was embarrassed because she thought the person she was tapping in front of her was me. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out to be Paul Sievertson from KCBS, <laughs> who was about to play the Hardanger fiddle in honor of Betty's birthday. <laughs> Mom often reminded me of her role as my mother, regardless of how old I am. And now I'd like to introduce Robert Denshin, who created the uh, beautiful program that you have in front of you. And uh, he has a few things to say. And before he comes up here, I wanted to mention, and this has been going very well, we were brought up with Scrabble, and charades and word games and mom always encouraged us to punt that's not normal for American kids to learn how to punt and understand words and she would periodically remind me of a time when we lived in Redondo Beach I was 10 or 11 and I was practicing my vocabulary and it was pouring rain outside and I looked at mom and I said look it's coming down in torrents and she corrected me, and she said, you mean torrents? So she encouraged us in the puns that you hear Bob do all the time from the stage. So it's in our blood to be on stage, because Mom started on stage with Radcliffe. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce the artist of our program, Robert Dungeon. Thank you. 